Let's compare the data types between Java and C++. In Java, we have four basic integer types. We have byte, short, int, and long, which take up one byte, two bytes, four bytes, and eight bytes respectively. Remember that the larger the size of the type, the wider range of values it could potentially store. In Java, we also have two floating point types. We have float and double. Again, four bytes and eight bytes. The larger the size, the more values it could represent. In addition to these number types, we have Boolean, which represents true or false. I say usually one byte here because it depends on the implementation of the Java virtual machine. Uh, in general, because of memory access on different architectures, it's usually easier to represent a Boolean variable as its own byte, even though in reality, a single true or false value only takes up one bit of information. But either way, usually this is one byte. And we have char, which is the basic character type, which is two bytes. In C++, we have these different integer types. We have char, which is one byte, short, which is two bytes, int, which is four bytes, long, which is eight bytes, and long, long, which is 16 bytes. Some things I should emphasize, in C++, these bytes, these sizes are not guaranteed. They're usually these sizes, but depending on the implementation of C++ that you're using, they could vary slightly. Further, in C++, we can have signed versus unsigned variables, versus in Java, all of these types must be signed. So in C++, an unsigned char, which is one byte, can have values between 0 and 255, because it doesn't need to use one byte at the beginning to determine the sign. Versus in Java, the byte type, it's by definition signed, so we can only hold values between negative 128 and 127. Equivalent things are noticed for each of these different types. In the signed variants, we're reserving one bit to represent the sign, and we're using the remaining n minus one bits to represent the magnitude. So the unsigned value has a larger positive range, but it doesn't allow negative values. Similarly, we have these floating point types. We have float and double, but new to C++ with respect to Java, we also have long double. Again, larger the size, wider range of values it could represent. And we also have a Boolean value, which is type bool. And usually this is one byte for similar reasons as I explained before. Even though it's storing one bit of information because of architecture reasons, it's generally stored in one byte on its own. We should also talk about strings between Java and C++. In Java, we have a string class. Remember, it has an uppercase S. Whereas in C++, we have a string type, which has a lowercase s. In Java, strings are immutable. The moment you create them, they cannot ever be modified. You can only change a string variable by creating a brand new string object and reassigning. In C++, strings are actually mutable. You can modify strings. In Java, you can concatenate a string to any other type. So I could do my string plus and then an integer, and it'll concatenate the integer to the string and get a string that has both of them together as the result. In C++, you can only concatenate strings with other strings. If you want to concatenate strings with integers or some other type, you have to first either convert that other type into a string, or you have to use a string stream. The third big distinction between the two is the substring method. In Java, we have a substring method that takes two parameters, a beginning index and an ending index. In C++, we have a substring method, SUBSTR, that takes as input a beginning index and a length. In Java, if I want to compare two non-primitive objects, I cannot use the relational operators. Instead, I have to use the equals and compare to methods. Otherwise, Java would just compare memory addresses of the variables, which is not what I want. In C++, however, even if A and B are objects, I can use the relational operators just fine. This is because in C++, we have what's called operator overloading in which case I can write a custom class and define how the different operators should function. So in C++, just use the relational operators as you would with primitives.